Hello, and welcome to another episode of Health Coach for Women. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about uh, expectations. Uh, when we set our expectations uh, and we expect certain things from people and when others fall short. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. So we have our own set of standards. Uh, we have our own uh, set of values and morals that we set for ourselves and also what we expect from others. But sometimes we don't always get that. Sometimes we don't always get that in return. And so how do we, how do we deal with that, right? How do we deal with that when we set these expectations and, and put high standards? Now, you, I would never tell anyone not to have high standards. You should always have high standards of the things that you want for yourself and your family. And you should settle for nothing less, right? Um, but we definitely want to be realistic, right? And remember that people are human. And so we have to be realistic in the things that we want when we are uh, setting <clears throat> high standards and expectations from others. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, like I said, if we are putting too much expectations uh, on others, uh, and when they fall short, um, we may feel hurt, disappointed, and things like that. So what do we do? What do we do? The first thing is realize that, you know, what you do and what you expect from others, uh, it needs to be clear, right? That's, that's the most important thing. So I would start with saying, number one, having that communication. And so what that can be applied to either business, right? Dealing with your people that you deal with in business uh, uh, dealings, as well as relationships, right? Personal, friendship, coworker, whatever. We need to have established uh, good communication. That's very important. So when we're setting standards for expectations from others, we should have good and open dialogue to be able to communicate. And so what you expect from those, you should be also be willing to give to others in return. Okay. So for example, um, I'll just say, you know, when it comes to, uh, I'll just say maybe in, maybe at work, right. Uh, and you are an, you are uh, an employee, employee, employer rather, and you hire someone for a specific job or task and you give them the job or task to do and you give them all the specifics and, but then they don't come through. Then they fall short of something. They, maybe they left us an important detail out that was very important. Um, how would you deal with that? Would you deal with them in anger or frustration? Uh, especially when this may have been a presentation or something like that, how would you deal with that? Would you be angry? Would you be upset? Um, what would you do, right? And so th these lessons can be applied in everyday life. How do you handle that? Again, the first is, of course, is establishing that communication, letting them know uh, where they went wrong, Right. And maybe look at what you where you may have gone wrong, because maybe you didn't fully explain the details fully. Um, maybe it's possible that you may have left out an important detail uh, on, on on giving the person the task to complete a job. Right. So that 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 is possible. So we have to look at not just the other person, um, but ourselves as well. And if we know that we if we did our part in being very uh, informative and detailed with our information and our specifics uh, and what we want, and then of course, then we have to look at the other person and say, okay, well, uh, this needs to be corrected. How do we handle that? And this can also be applied to relationships, right? So uh, let's say, for example, you your mate, uh, maybe he's supposed to, he or she is supposed to pick you up at a certain time. Uh, every day, you know, um, they know, hey, you get off work at three o'clock, 
at three o'clock, you know, you would hope that they can be there, they be there and be there on time. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you can get caught in traffic. A person can be a little delayed by whatever things happen. And, and that is expected and understandable because we don't control some of the external uh, forces that external or external things or events that can occur, right? So if a person do it one time, okay, you can give them a pass and, and, you know, and if they gave you a valid reason or something like that, yes, you could say, okay, okay, you can give them a pass on that. And they did it twice and they did it three times and four times. Right. And so there seems to be a pattern. So if you notice where something is becoming a pattern, then you have to say, OK, so does this person, this individual, this company, this organization, business, whatever, do this individual or person or whoever we're dealing with, do they value our time? Do they value? Uh, what they are doing, uh, do they value the relationship? More importantly, do they value the relationship, right? Because if there's no value to the relationship, then there's nothing lost and nothing gained. And with that being said, sometimes you have to make the decision uh, to whether to either still uh, have a relationship de de dealing or with that person, individual, company, whatever, or you make a decision to say, well, maybe I need to move forward and look elsewhere. So we need to look at that. We need to, that is very important sometimes because we feel like, sometimes we feel like we have to deal with certain things or have to put up with certain things. And we really don't. Uh, we, we really do not have to. And sometimes you may feel like you're, all out of options or you don't have any choice um, because maybe you don't know how to do the specific task or job or, or you know, you rely on that person for something. But if you're not valued, if the person don't find you to be of value and they are repeatedly showing you that they don't find you to be of value, then you, the ball, it will be in your court, right? The ball is now in your court. And you can look at a situ situation, look at it, take yourself out of the picture and look at it as if it's your best friend in this situation or your daughter or, your, you know, someone in your family that you love and care about. And look at it from the ex outside looking in. And how would you assess that? And what advice uh, coming from a, a kind, loving place, what advice would you give that person? What advice would you truly give from the heart if you really cared about that person? Would you, would you advise them to stay uh, in a relationship where you're not valued, where the other person is not valued uh, and, and they don't find your time valuable, they don't find your opinions valuable and they don't respect you um, at all, right? Or they just don't show up or, or they just fall short of what they're supposed to do and always making excuses. We need to look at that. And so again, this can be applied in any relationship where you're dealing with, whether it's business or personal, you know, on the job, um, we need to be able to do that. We need to be, and it's the, again, it's okay to set standards and have an ex, ex, having expectations and high standards, but we, we also need to realize um, that who are we selecting? Who are we selecting to do the job? Are these people qualified to do the job and get the job done, right? And so and if we're looking at relationships and I'll bring it, set the example for a relationship, is this person qualified to be your partner? Is this person qualified to be your partner? Let's look at the past history, right? Let's look at their past patterns of their previous relationships, right? And so they'll, they may open up and share with you and tell you some things about from their past. And so we, there's always their story. There's, there's always this person's story and the other. And then somewhere in the middle is the truth. 
So let's look at that for a moment. You have someone that we expect this person, let's say whoever you chose to be your spouse, mate, whatever. And there's something that maybe you may find it that they may do or, or, or may how they may treat you or things that they may or may not do. Uh, and you've addressed it and all, and, and it's something where you're doing your best to communicate fec- effectively, right? And so you, when you come to when you're coming to address the person, you're not yelling and screaming and shouting and fussing and fussing and cussing or whatever. You're not doing that. You're you're approaching the individual uh, from one human being to another uh, with 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 the intention of being respectful, uh, being honest, being fair. Uh, and when you bring in these things to the attention. Uh, of what they may or may not be doing, uh, be prepared to, they may not like your response. And so we have to be able to handle that. So, but if we, let me, I kind of drifted off for a moment, but I wanted to, to say, if we, if we choosing this person, we, this spouse that we have, that we're dealing with or whatever, this mate, our mate, and and you know that their past history, maybe they never held a job. Maybe they've never held a job for more than, I don't know, three months. Maybe they've never held a job down for more than three months. Now, now you know this because they've openly told this to you. They shared it, this with you. And so now you're with this person and you notice you've been with this person for over a year now and they've been through several different jobs. And so in between jobs here and there, uh, but now it's taking a toll, right? On the financial part of the relationship. It's putting a strain on uh, the the relationship uh, due to finances, something like that, because now uh, the money is not always consistent because the other person is always have to, uh, every three months they get tired of a job for whatever reason and they leave and they go somewhere else. And maybe they may be out of a job for about a month or two, maybe a little longer. And so this is the pattern, but you knew that prior, right? You knew that prior to getting into the relationship, but we set these expectations Right. And so this is where I'm leading to. We set these high standards uh, for an, another individual of what we expect from them. Well, yes, you could have definitely communicated and said, listen, you know, if we're going, you and I are going to get, get together, you know, you need to make sure that you hold down a job and secure another job before you let go of the old one. I understand maybe you just haven't found something that you full that you fully enjoy and, and, and you're passionate about. I get it. But in the in in the process, you need to be able to still uh be able to bring in a source of income to help with the family, to help with the, uh, if you're going to be in this relationship and we're, we're together, we're in this uh, union, this relationship, and we're cohabitating, right? Okay. And so you know this. Now, who's to blame here? Is there someone to blame um, when you have this firsthand knowledge, you had this firsthand information that this person you already knew um, that they always went in between jobs. Well, I would have to say it, it, it kind of falls on both individuals simply because uh, you, ha- you had this firsthand knowledge. You had this knowledge that uh, this person are always going through jobs every three months or so, right? And that's been the pattern. They've been open with you and told you this. Right, and so we we can't be upset at the other person. Uh, you knew this already. Should you have gone, proceeded on with the relationship or not? Well, that's a personal choice. But knowing that, and we can't, and we can't go and saying, "Oh, well, I'm going to change him. I'm going to I'm going to to fix him. I'm going to uh, mold and mold this person into what I want them to be." We can't, you, you can't do it. That's the wrong thing to do. You can't go into a relationship trying to thinking you can mold and shape this person into what you want them to be. A person has to be who they want to be. 
And a person has to feel free to be who they want to be. And so with that being said, well, in that aspect, the both, both would need to take responsibility because one person, you already have that information and the other who is a person who is not living to that so-called high expectation knows that if I get into this, I'm going to have to maintain a job longer than three months or four months because this is what my partner, this is what my mate, my spouse is expecting from me. And so if you can, if you both can come in and meet in the middle with that agreement uh, and, and under, level of understanding of communication where one knows what they want from the other and the other knows what the other person wants, then we have uh, a good match. I wouldn't say a perfect match, but you have this good match. Okay, there is, there is uh, some type of communication and we have a level of understanding. And so when that doesn't happen, we, we, can't, we can't really blame the other person. We can't blame the other person. And it's just like when you make a selection to, to work with people, right? And so um, it's like shopping at going to Nordstrom's or Saks, uh, shopping there at this high-end store where you may able to, you may get quality goods, quality merchandises, m- merchandise, uh, as opposed to Walmart. Can you really compare the two as they being on the same level? Walmart, right? Pretty much a mediocre standard, your basic for the basics. And then you have Nordstrom, or maybe I'm not, I shouldn't be comparing supermarket to a retail, but. Okay, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? I, I can't think of another retail, uh, low end retail store that I could think of. But anyway, so, but you get what I'm saying, right? And so let's just say if you wanted to buy clothing from Walmart, clothing from Walmart, clothing from Macy's, you can't really compare the two. Uh, one is definitely going to have higher quality of merchandise and clothing than the other right? Uh, The quality, the fabric may be a better, Macy's may have a better quality of fabric. Maybe I shouldn't be using the names, but anyway, uh, Macy's shouldn't be, uh, should have, will will more than likely have better quality than the Walmart brand clothing, right? And so when you compare the two, and of course, Macy's will have higher prices than a Walmart brand because the quality. So you've heard the saying, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. So why do I say that? We can't set high expectations when we are the ones that selected, right? Or that we are the one that made the choice and choose and selected to go with either Walmart or Macy's. And so when it comes to businesses, Sometimes, and if you're working with other people in business, you may choose Walmart or you may choose Macy's. You may, um, you may choose, uh, you may either go with someone who is quick, fast, and cheap, but don't get the job done. Or you may go with someone who's more higher price and you don't have to tell them a thing and they're going to get it, the job done, right? They're going to get it done. And All you do, you give them specific details, description and what you want, and boom, you got it, okay? Services rendered. And and I have to really, I'm gonna choose my words carefully, but you know, when, when you're dealing with other people and you know, sometimes people will let their ego get into the way of really expressing what they really want to express or uh, have too much pride in expressing what they really want to express. So we, we have to stay away from that. We, we have to do better when it comes to that. Uh, we have to be able to really communicate effectively uh, in a way um, that is not too 
not to, to I would say, I would say, I don't want to say being gentle with our words, but gentle in a way what we, where we don't come off as being harsh, but firm enough where we are able to really get the message across and be clear, but also in a respectful uh, manner. And that's so important. Uh, and that's what, you know, when, when you're setting your intentions for what you want in all areas and aspects of your life, uh, it's about setting those intentions and being clear of what you want and be being realistic, right? Being realistic in what you want when you make your selection of, of, of choosing a mate, of deal, having choosing a, a, a business to work with, uh, you know, do you want quality? Do you want a quality mate, right? Do you want a quality professional that's going to charge you a higher price because their work is high quality and they do great work? Or do you want mediocrity? Do you want to settle? Uh, and 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 just just to say, well, you've got this done, and or you have this mate, or you you have somebody. Oh, he's great looking. Oh, oh, he's great. And he's got a great body and this and that. But uh, can't keep a job for more than a month. <laughs> can't keep a hold a job for more than three months, or more than less than a year. Changing jobs, two to three jobs in a year or more quality, right? Quality. Quality is what we look for. Quality is what we should be looking for, right? And having effective communication, having effective communication. And so all of this, all of this pl plays a part in, in, in our wellness too. Wouldn't you agree? Um, because if we are dealing with someone uh, with a mate that's possibly uh, draining your funds and you're stressed out now over money, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Or working with someone on a business aspect when you've hired a person to do a job and now you have to hire someone else to fix what someone else messed up. So we really need to take a look at setting our expectations too high. Setting our expectations too high and, and not putting, having so much uh, expectations on another person's, but the expectations that of what we set for ourselves and what we want, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. You have expectations of, of um, being with someone uh, who is, I'm, I'm trying to get my word together and what I'm saying. So uh, basically you want your expectations of a mate because I wanna make sure I'm saying it in a way where it's not misunderstood. So you want to make sure when you're choosing a mate or someone that you're going to be with, it's not based on just uh, the looks of a person, right? That's not, that's not, that's important, but it's not as important as the quality and the character of the person. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? You know, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, maybe some men are more important. Maybe for them, it's just having a trophy piece on their arm rather than someone who, who can be a trophy piece, but has a deeper intellect. I don't know. I don't know. You answer. So I just wanted to uh, touch on that, uh, that when we choosing uh, and setting our expectations on others, uh, we first need to also make sure that we have high expectations for ourselves, but in the process of doing that, in the process of doing that, being realistic of what we of what we can think that not what we can think but what we can expect right based on what we know based on our information 
And that's why I think it would say, you know, a person uh, can't really get their feelings hurt in a relationship when you, if you don't set any expectations, but that's kind of in a different area of what I'm talking about. So I don't want to confuse you, but we can set expectations of what we want, right? But not these high expectations where deep down, you know, that person may not be able to deliver, or may you may not even know, you just, you just stuck on what you want and, and, and that's it. When who you're choosing may not be the one for you, right? So that, that's, that's it, that's it right there. Who you are choosing may not be the one for you. And so then you have to go back and reassess yourself, right? It always goes back to self, reassess yourself and what it is you want. And do you yourself and what you are looking for to get to get to receive from others, are you yourself reflecting that back? Hmm, that's it right there. That's it. That's what I wanted to. I was trying to find a way to express it in a way that you can get it. So hopefully I think you got it. All right. So um, that is all that uh, I would really wanted to touch on today. And I'm working on some things. Um, if you notice, I've, been, I've kind of been switching around and I usually don't record at night um, because of the lighting. And here in Cleveland, um, we got a lot of snow today. So it's it's been a day today. Um, with all the snow. I had, I didn't go outside. So, but I usually do. I had to take care of a lot of things today. Um, had to get a lot of things squared away, but, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I want to work on getting some things changed. The, the change is happening, but it's happening slowly, but they're happening nevertheless. Okay, so with the slow progress and, and, and baby steps that you're making in your life, be okay with that and celebrate those small wins, right? Celebrate those small wins, wins or rather than getting upset about the things that's not going as quick as you would like them to, okay? And so I want you to stay healthy. I want you to stay focused. And, and being positive, because we all know that life happens and it's not always going to be uh, peaches and cream, right? And, and that's including myself. Things aren't always going to be peaches and cream, right? I'm not a fan of seven, eight inches of snow or more, okay? So, but that's the reality of it. <laughs> all right. So stay healthy. Uh, if you're out there now, this is like flu season for, for viruses, colds, and all that other stuff that's going on out there. Take your elderberry, uh, take your ginger turmeric tea. You should be taking vitamin C daily. You should definitely be having your vitamin D, your omega-3s. You should be focusing on getting your health together, not being stressed and depressed over a job. Uh, over a, a spouse, a relationship, a significant other over money. We are in this together. I, I said that this year, what I'm focused on and for me and what I want for others this year to be this year of healing and some real transformation and abundance this year. All right. So people have been dealing with this whole situation uh, with the whole pandemic, I don't even know what to call it, but this whole thing that's been going on for two years and people are tired, people are being stressed. I want us to get back to healing. I want us to get back to healing and being uh, this healing journey, this uh, year of health and wealth, healing and transformation. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to continue con to be continuing on this journey of healing for 2022. Stay blessed, stay safe out there. Bye for now. I hope to hear from you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>